All right, so we're going to work through this practice test. Going to go kind of quickly through this, but you can use this to check your answers and uh, maybe get a few tips along the way. So we got one third x to the third. We are three to the x. We've got to uh, graph this guy. So, so we've got uh, got to find some points here. Uh, we know that three to the x normally goes through zero one. However, this one third is going to make it go one third of that. All right, that's not going to work so well. Okay, so it's going to be one third. That's huge. Well, let's try this again. The darn thing. Well, it's going to go through one third there, and then three to the first is usually three, but we're going to drop that down one third. Uh, three to the second is usually nine, but a third of nine is three. Okay, and then we have a third, a third, a third. It's going to look like this. We're going to have an asymptote of the zero axis. And that is the x-axis. All right. So here we've got 3x plus 2. This is going to raise our asymptote up. 2 there. So that's 2. And then our 3 to the x is going to go through uh, 0, 1, 1, 3, and then 2, 9, somewhere up here and off to the left. Make sure you draw that uh, asymptote in there. Something like that. Okay? All right, number three, number two, actually. Okay, so we're going to shift this here. We're going to shift it left three. So we've got uh, g of x. We'll give it a different name. Equals uh, left is going to be inside the exponent here. So that's going to be x uh, plus three because it's opposite from what we'd expect. Uh, it's going to go down 4, so that's going to be minus 4 out front. And it's going to reflect across the x-axis, so that's a vertical flip, so that's negative out here. For this guy, we're going to make the shift, and it's going to go right. So we've got our 3. Uh, it's going to go right, so that's going to be x minus 3. It's going to go 3 units up, so we're going to add 3 out here, and reflect across the x-axis. By the way, if we reflect across the y-axis, we'd want to put a negative up here uh, in front of that x there, okay? Uh, here, which one of these guys uh, has the smallest a value? So this is just a, a general uh, exponential function. So remember the a is the initial value, and the b is the uh, growth rate, okay, or decay rate. So... Uh, if we have the smallest a value, well, a value, once again, is the uh, initial value, so that would be this b, okay? So b, and it has the lowest uh, y-intercept, okay? Uh, which value has the largest a value? Well, that's looking for the largest intercept, and that's up here. That's going to be c, and so this is the largest y-intercept, Okay? Which graph has the smallest b value? Well, small, we're talking a fraction. Fraction means exponential decay. There's only one here that has exponential decay. This is exponential growth. This is really exponential growth, but it's flipped upside down. So this is like a negative, uh, I don't know, negative what, 2 to the x or something like that, all right? Um, yeah, actually, this is two to the, negative 2 to the x. This might be negative 4 to the x. All right. Uh, so anyways... So this is exponential decay. Our B value is a fraction here. So that is graph A. And because our B there would be less than 1 and greater than 0. Okay. Now uh, the largest B value, well, that would be the steepest one here. These have negative A values here. That's why they're going upside down. All right. Um, but the, we, what we've got to do is we've got to check how quickly it's going up. Okay, uh, this here has an A value of 3, and um, so the B value is a little tough to see here. This here has an A value of 4, but if we just look at the steepness, and it'd be nice if we could see another point up here, but we can't. So that one is steeper than this one, and so we're going to call that C because it's the steepest graph, Okay. Let's go on to the next page here. Section 4B, we're graphing logarithmic functions here. And so we got some transformations again. Okay. This minus 4, like usual, is going to go right 4. 
Now, the inside is left or right, and this plus 7 is going to go up 7. Okay, the transformation's here. We're going to go left 2, and we're going to go down 3 because of our negative 3 there. This is a vertical change. Outside is a vertical change, and so we got a vertical reflection. And uh, vertical stretch, stretch of two, okay? The domain, domain of a logarithm is when 3x plus 1 has to be greater than 0. So we subtract 1 from both sides. 3x is greater than negative 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is greater than negative 1 third. Okay, so the asymptote is at uh, x equals negative one-third, and the domain here would be from negative one-third to infinity because it's greater than. Remember to watch out, and for some cases when you divide by a negative number here, you'll have to flip that uh, inequality there. So, all right, uh, describe the transformations for uh, a log base 2, okay? So we're going to describe and graph. So we got a minus 2 here. Minus 1 is going to go uh, right 1 and up 2. So uh, normally a logarithm curve, our planal logarithm curve, has an asymptote of the y-axis. But this right 1 is going to give us an asymptote of 1, okay? Let's get a scale here. That's one. That's one there. Okay. Don't forget to label your axes somehow. That's an ugly one. One, two, three, four, five. How about this? Okay. Um, so we got that. Now we're going to go up two. So what we've got to do is this. If we go up two, I'm going to locate this point. And I'm going to make a little mental note. I'm going to actually put a physical point there. That's like my new origin. The origin has gone right two and up uh, right one and up two, okay? If you want, you can even draw in a little dotted line. Now, treat this like your asymptote. Uh, I'm sorry, like your x-axis, okay? It's not an asymptote. It's an x-axis. The vertical line there, the vertical dashed line, is the asymptote. So from this point, now let's think about how we graph y equals log base 2 of x, all starting from this point right here. So we know that it goes through 1, 0 normally. Well, from this new origin, we go right 1, and uh, there's our point at uh, 1, 0. Normally, this logarithm curve goes right 2 and up 1, because the log base 2 of 1, uh, I'm sorry, log base 2 of 2 is 1. Okay, so we're going to go uh, 2, 1. Again, I'm counting from the new origin. Then I'm going to go over 4 and up 2, because... Uh, 2 is the uh, exponent we put on 2 to get 4. Anyways, there's the graph there. That's the idea. Find your, your translated uh, origin and graph from there. Okay. Uh, here we're going to go just down 3. Okay, so we have the same asymptote. Our asymptote is the y-axis here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Two, three, four, five. Label it up, okay. Uh, and uh, but it's going to go down three. So one, two, three. Again, if you want, you can go ahead and uh, put a little dotted line here. It's not part of the graph, but it's just kind of a helper line. That's like our new axis. This is like our new origin. So treat this as the origin, and let's graph y equals log base three of x. Okay. So that goes through zero, one. Uh, 1, 0, actually, 3, 1, uh, 9, 2, and then it's going to go down, 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 okay? So find that translator origin and draw your graph in. Let's move on to 4C. Okay, 4C here, uh, we want to solve some problems with exponential functions, okay? So given this function here, we want to determine if it's exponential growth or decay. That all decide, determines is determined by the B value. So this is going to be exponential decay. And the reason is, is because uh, 0.5 is less than 1. 
Okay, the B value is less than 1. Uh, this guy right here, looking at the B value, okay, this is going to be exponential growth. Now, even though it's in the negative direction there, we're still going to call this exponential growth. Okay. Because 1.2, the B value, is greater than 1. Now we want an exponential function that goes through these two points here. Well, we want it uh, just a simple y equals a times b to the x. So substitute uh, uh, 0 for x and 5 for y, and we get this, uh, 0. And b to the 0 is just 1, so a is 5. Now we've got that a is 5, so we can find our b value. So we got y equals 5 b to the x, and let's substitute this 4, 405, so let's put 4 in for x and 405 for y, so 5b times the fourth, let's divide everything by 5, and we've got 81 equals b to the fourth, take the fourth root there, and we have that b is 3, the fourth root of 81 is 3. So now we can write our function y equals 5 times b to the x. Uh, nope, b in that case, we just found out what b is. b is 3. Okay? Don't forget to rewrite your function. Okay? Uh, one more, same idea. Plug in 2, 2, and 4, 8. Well, if we plug in 2, 2, we get uh, y equals a, b to the x. So we have 2 equals a, b to the 2. All right, uh, we could solve this for a, and that gives us uh, a is 2 over b squared. Uh, then we can plug in this other point here, and we know that uh, y is 8 when x is 4. If we plug this guy into here, we get uh, 8 equals 2 over b squared times b to the fourth. So 8 equals equals 2b to the fourth all over b squared. Well, these are going to cancel there, leaving us with, uh, let's see, 8 equals 2b squared. So divide by 2, and b square root, b is 2. Okay? Uh, it could be 2 or negative 2, actually, but b cannot be a negative number. So if b is 2, we can come all the way back over here, plug that in, and we see that a is 2 over 2 squared, which is one, uh, 2 over 4, which is 1 half. And so our function y equals 1 half times 2 to the x. Okay? All right. Solving exponential equations, we want to... Uh, put it into, we want to take the logarithm, basically, uh, unless we can find a common uh, exponent, uh, I'm sorry, common base. Now, uh, 216 is really 6 to the third. So we have 6 to the third to the x minus 5. And let's rewrite 36. Well, that's 6 squared to the x plus 2. You want to be familiar that 216 is 6 to the third power. Now we're going to multiply these. This is 6 to the 3 times x minus 5. Power to power, we multiply. This is 6 squared to the x plus 2. And since we have a common base here, uh, we can say that uh, these guys here, these exponents are the same. So 3 times x minus 5 equals 2 times x plus 2. Okay? And so that's 3x minus 15 equals 2x plus 4. Solve that up. Subtract 3x, add 15. We get x is 19. Okay? Over here, you want to subtract 8 from both sides first. We get 3 to the 2x plus 1 equals 27. Uh, we can rewrite this 27 as uh, 3 to the third power. And so now we know that uh, 2x plus 1 equals 3. Subtract 1, divide by 2, we see that x equals 1. Okay? Uh, another way you can do this is you could take the log of both sides. We could come back here. We could say take the log of this and the log of this. 
we can take that exponent down there. Okay, uh, this is going to get a little uglier, but it works. Log 3 equals log 27. And if you divide both sides by log 3 here, squeeze in there, okay. If you divide both sides by log 3 and you, and you go to your calculator and figure out what this is, this is actually going to give you 3. Log of 27 divided by log of 3 is 3. And that will put you right to here, which gives you the same answer. Okay? Uh, here, 5 to the x. Well, uh, this, uh, 625, is 5 to the 4th. And so that is, another way to write that is 5 to the x equals 5 to the negative 4. And so x is negative 4. Okay. Last but not least, could this be an exponential function? Well, we've got to check the, the uh, factors here, the difference, uh, sorry, the quotients. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2, or 8 divided by 4 is 2. We have a constant uh, multiple there. We're multiplying by 2 times 2 times 2. So yes, okay, we have a constant multiple uh, of 2. Or actually, yeah, that's fine. Constant multiple of 2. Okay? All right. Um, what's a better way? I just don't like the, that multiple here. Uh, probably a better way to say that would be it's not a constant multiple. It's a constant ratio is what it is. That's a better way to say it. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to go on to logarithmic equations. To solve these guys, we want to change them into exponential. Move this around. Square root of x minus 2 is 3 squared. So we have square root of x minus 2 is 9. Now let's square both sides. And 81, add 2, and x equals 83. 